What's up, everybody? Crypto Sloth here, uh, here for lesson four of my liquidity providing series. And today we're going to be talking about reading LP data. So I'm going to be going over some really important metrics that you need to be able to understand in order to uh, decide if a specific pool is it good to provide LPN, if it's not good to provide LPN, or just be able to analyze like what's going on with the liquidity of a certain coin that you're interested in. All of these metrics are really important. They're the bare basic ones. There are probably some more uh, advanced ones or, or uh, more really specific ones that you can learn later. But these are like the bare basics that you definitely need to know uh, to be able to understand what's going on with LP and to help make help you make the decision on if this is a pair that you want to be providing liquidity in. Yesterday, we talked about permanent loss, like the uh, pros and cons of it, uh, how to understand it, and how to assess the risk uh, based on a certain pair that you're providing in. And today, we're going to be talking about some metrics um, surrounding liquidity. So I hope you enjoy it, um, and I hope you find it useful. Let's dig on in. So the first one I want to talk about is volume. And all volume, mean is, volume means is the amount of money being traded within a certain pair. And so generally, high volumes means more fees, low volume means less fees. And this makes sense because the fees that you're earning for liquidity providing is a percentage of each trade. And if volume is the total amount of trades that are going through a specific pair, then the fees for a given day or a given period of time is a percentage of the volume over that period of time. So as a general rule of thumb, Pairs with high volumes are more favorable than a pair with low volume because if there's more volume, that means there's more trading, which means you are earning more money. So you want to try to find uh, pools that have a decent amount of volume going into them, especially, and we'll talk about TVL a little bit, a good volume to TVL ratio. So uh, here uh, we just have like an old volumes of the hex usdc 0.3 percent pair and you'll notice that there are some days that have higher volume and some days that have lower volume uh, this is pretty typical but generally you want things that have higher volume you can also in many of the liquidity uh dexes and many of the de dexes you can uh sort the pools by volume so if you have a certain token like in this example hex like hey i want to provide liquidity with my hex but i'm not sure which um pair may be the best just sort it by volume over either a 24 hour seven day uh monthly period and you can kind of see which one you might want to start looking at first to provide liquidity in TVL. So TVL stands for total value locked. And all that, that's just a fancy way of saying the amount of liquidity that exists in that specific pool. So if you remember, fees are distributed proportionally to everybody providing liquidity at that specific price. And so the more TVL that there is, the more competition there is for fees. The less TVL there is, the less competition there is for fees. And this makes a lot of sense because if the money is being distributed amongst more people, then your cut of that of that uh, of those fees are less because there are more people getting that money. And if there is low TVL, there's low competition, you're getting a higher percentage of the fees that are being distributed because there are less people that those fees are being distributed to. So we just talked about volume and we went over TVL here. Now, ideally you want high volume, low TVL because that more fees are being earned, but they're being distributed amongst a smaller number of people. So if you're looking at volume and TVL, the most ideal is high volume, low TVL. Now there's a flip side to this where that TVL means the amount of liquidity that there is. And so there, you don't want too low TVL because that means no one really wants to trade with it because there's a lot of slippage, there's a lot of um, price action, there's a lot of volatility, and people may not be able to enter or exit. Say if there's like $5 of liquidity, nobody's coming in with $1,000. But if there's a million dollars of liquidity, plenty of people might come in with $1,000. So there's a balance here where you don't want such a low TVL that you nobody can trade with, but you don't want so much that like there's so much competition for the fees from a liquidity provider standpoint. But make sure you're looking at volume and make sure you're looking at TVL. Next, uh, this is more has to do with you personally when you're setting your position, and this is your LP range. Now, we touched on this in the previous video about impermanent loss, but tighter range equals more percentage of coins being traded, which means more fees. So if you're going for fees, you're trying to get high APRs, ideally, 
uh, you will be putting your range as tightly as possible to be earning more fees. The wider the range, the less percentage of coins that are being traded. So there are less fees uh, and this results in a lower permanent loss. So if you have a more long-term position, you don't really want to uh, experience 100% permanent loss in either direction. You want to be earning a decent amount of money over time. A wider range is what you want. And, and this... Um, corollary between tight range, more fees, wide range, less fees makes sense. Because if we have a tighter range, more of our coins are being traded with. So we're providing more of a service to the market. So we're entitled to more fees. And the opposite is true for a wider range. Less percentage of coins being traded, less of our coins are get, being used currently to service the market, which means we are getting less fees. Now, they, these two um, images I took from a while ago uh, from poolfish.xyz. And so it's basically showing that exact scenario. With $10,000 in this wider range right here, you're earning $83 a day. This was many, many months ago. Um, but if you put that same, uh, at that same given period of time, if you took that same $10,000 and really concentrated it around price, which is this red bar, you would be earning $310 a day. So there's a humongous difference between wide and short ranges, uh, wide LP ranges and short LP ranges in terms of the APR that you can make. It's the difference between, you know, uh, 306% yearly APR and, you know, 1,133% at that given point in time. So the only thing you have to keep in mind with that is your permanent loss risk. And the other thing you have to keep in mind with that is time frames. So if you remember in these two graphs that we were talking about before, um, if the uh, L if the price goes outside of your range, you're in 100% impermanent loss, but you also are not earning fees anymore because you're only earning fees when your coins are actively being traded with. So when you have a tight range like we have up here, yeah, you might be earning you know $310 a day, but how many days is your position really in the money for? Is it even in the money for a day? You don't know if it's really if it's like plus minus a half a percent. Yeah, you could be earning a thousand dollars as long as it stays in that range. But if it goes out of that range in 30 minutes, well, you've only earned that APR for that 30 minute period of time. And now you've experienced 100 percent permanent loss in the direction that the price has gone through. So you need to take into account, like, how long do you want to provide this liquidity for? Are you here for a short flip or like a short APR, like a day or two? Well, then maybe you keep it keep it at a tighter range. But if you want to make sure that you're earning money over a long period of time, then you probably want to widen your ranges a bit. And this is from another website. Um, and this uh, fees, you know, this is the 24 hour monthly and yearly APR, uh, given the specific ranges. And then all this is saying is all this, all that I'm trying to get across with these three numbers right here, um, is that the longer that your position is in the money, the longer that price is trading within your range, the longer you're making fees for. So a wide range that has a lower APR, may actually be more advantageous and make you more money than a tight range with less uh, APR, with a lower APR. And that's because the wider range is probably going to be in the money longer. And that's really what this second graph over here is getting across is like the wider the range is, the further apart these black bars are, the more price actions that are staying within that range, which means the longer amount of time you're providing liquidity, you're, the longer amount of time your liquidity is making money for you. So don't just take into account like the impermanent loss risk and the high APRs of a tight range, but also keep in mind, like, how long do I want this position open for? Do I want it a month? Do I want it a day? Do I want it a year? And the longer your time frame is, the more you need to bias your ranges to the wider, uh, a wider range. The more you need to bias your LP ranges to a wider range. Uh, so we talked about V3 histograms a little bit uh, in a couple a couple videos ago, uh, but I just kind of want to get that cross uh, that that point across again. These histograms represent the amount of liquidity that exists at given price ranges. And so this was back, you know, when Hex was much higher in, in 2022, where it's between 3.6 cents and 4.0 cents here. Uh, that's where the, the price was more or less. So this is where the price is. And as there's more liquidity uh, at a specific price, the higher the bars are. And the less liquidity at a certain price, the lower the bars are. And that's how you read these graphs. And so, you know, as, as there's more, uh, these bars are higher and there's more liquidity, price is going to move a lot slower through that range. And as there's lower liquidity, these bars are lower, price is going to move faster. And that makes sense because the higher bars means more liquidity, which means it takes more money to move price through that range. Um, and the lower bars there are, the less money is there, which makes it takes less money to move price through that range. So when you're providing 
liquidity um, and you're uh, analyzing these bars, just understand the higher that there are, the more TVL there is, which means there's more competition at that range. Uh, but the, also, from a time frame perspective, there's a higher chance that price is going to trade within that range for a longer period of time. So if you see high bars, generally think lower APRs, but maybe a higher time frame that you're per, that you're earning fees in, and the lower bars means less um, higher APR, but maybe the shorter amount of time you're going to be able to provide liquidity in that range, or the shorter amount of time that your money is going to be actively traded with, which means the less, which means more time you're going to be earning fees. For the low bars, it's the opposite. Your the time spent within your LP range is going to be shorter because price is more volatile. Now, there can be more than one V3 pool for a given uh, token. So for this, we have a hex ETH pair. We have two hex ETH pairs with different um, fee structures, 0.3% and 1%. And all that means is the 0.3% one for every trade, 0.3% of the trade is being given to the LP providers. And the 1%, 1% of the trade is being given to the LP providers. But not only do we have two different pairs for uh, hex and ETH, but we also have a different pair with hex and USDC. And so what you have to keep in mind when you're reading these histograms is that you need to take into account all of the pools that currently exist to get a good understanding of what's going on. Uh, if you're trying to analyze this for price movement, for example. So here, you know, let's just take this purple bar, for example, for where price is at this specific given point in time. We have a lot of liquidity in this 0.3 uh, hex ETH pair. We have a decent amount in this 1% pair, but there's no liquidity in this hex USDC pair right here. So most of the trades are going to be routed through this hex ETH pair, these two hex ETH pairs, and not much is going to be routed through this hex USDC pair. And so if you were just looking at this hex USDC pair, you might be like, oh my God, there's not much liquidity. Price is going to move so fast, but not really, because there's a lot of ETH that can be used as, um, as liquidity to be able to trade with. So you need to be able to um, kind of in your mind superimpose all of these liquidity graphs together to really understand like where liquidity is and how price might 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 move relative to the different uh, liquidity pools that exist. And this is also important when setting up your position because you'll notice that most of the fee most of the volume is going to be routed through this pair. So there's going to be a higher volume um, at this given range because there's more liquidity. Um, but there's less competition in this hex USDC pair. So maybe you could be earning uh, more fees if you provide hex USDC because there's less money there. So you'll be getting more of the action of people swapping hex for USDC or people uh, buying hex with USDC. And so these are things you need to keep in mind when analyzing a specific coin for liquidity. You just need to keep in mind that there could be multiple pools at any given point in time. And when you're trying to analyze it for price action, you definitely need to take into account every single pool that exists. So that's it. Those are the those are the data that you should keep in mind: TVL, volume, um, how long you want to keep your liquidity position open for. Um, you need to keep into account how many histograms there are for that given point in time, and also be mindful of the bands that you're setting when you're doing a V3 position. If you master and and really deeply understand all the concepts we talked about in this video, you'll be well equipped to start providing liquidity yourself across different scenarios. So it's like, hey, do I want a long-term passive income play? Do I want to make a quick flip of like 10, 20 percent in a day? Like whatever it is you're looking for, like with these metrics, you can help. You can decide how to set that position, how wide your range should be. How how long you should expect to be in the money for, and which pairs to be providing liquidity on. So I hope you enjoyed that video. We're about halfway through the series, so I really, really hope you've gotten um, a lot of good, valuable information so far. If you want a little bit of extra help with providing liquidity, uh, specifically with me, I do offer 15-minute calls uh, that are absolutely free for anybody. So um, if you go to the description box below, you'll see that there is a link to this Calendly app. And if you click on any of these buttons, you can block off a 15 minute slot to talk about uh, liquidity providing with me personally. These 15 minutes are uh, completely for you to uh, answer any questions that you might have um, about what we've talked about in this video series up to this video and in the coming videos um, in the next couple of days. So um, if you want some personalized help with your liquidity providing, this is how you do it. Um, I've really enjoyed these conversations with the people who watch my videos. And so I hope to see you live, um, in a, in a, in a free 15 minute call. Um, you know, you can get a lot out of these. If you have a question that maybe, uh, you need a little bit more help with, or that these videos aren't completely answering for you. And you just want a quick answer. This is how you do it. So just click the link below, find a time that works for you. You're going to be getting an email with the details on how the call is, uh, where the call will be as well as confirmation on the time. 
I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, lesson four on reading LP data. And tomorrow we're going to be talking about routing. So take care and I'll see you tomorrow in the next one. Peace out.